Today I'm going to share with you how you can make your very own wild, organic, and GMO-free pectin powder. Many commercial pectins contain added ingredients, which you probably don't want, so just take a look at the ingredient list, as well as they are derived from GMO ingredients. Even ones that state that they're all natural can contain genetically modified ingredients. But it's pretty easy to make your very own pectin if you live in an area where you can get bunch berries. Also known here in Newfoundland as Cracker Jacks or Cracker Berries, it's Cornus canadensis. So here's what the plant looks like and you'll usually find it in woodland soils along trail edges. It likes a bit of sun but it likes the woodland soil. Here's the full plant and you'll see the cluster of bright orange berries at the top. I'm just going to pick these berries. They just roll off quite easily and then take them in to dry. Now the problem with using these berries for their pectin is that they contain a really hard stone and the pectin is all attached onto the stone. It's very difficult to remove. So if you're using it in the jam or whatever you're going to use your pectin for, you need to try to sift out these stones and they don't detach well from this piece of pectin here. So this is a much better way to make pectin for use in your jams and jellies. So I have the berries here in a wicker basket just lined with a paper towel because they will get pretty small when they dry and I just have them in a sunny window and it'll take a few days for these to dehydrate and uh, be ready to make our pectin. If you have a dehydrator, feel free to use that and dehydrate out all the moisture. Okay, so it's been day three of these little bunch berries, or Cornus canadensis, uh, sitting in a sunny window. And they're nice and dry now. And what I did was a couple times a day as I'd pass by, I'd just give them a little toss, make sure nothing stuck together. And you want to make sure there's no moisture. They should be very crunchy and dry. If sitting them in a windowsill didn't remove all the moisture, you can just pop them in a convection oven for, oh, probably 10 or 15 minutes on the lowest heat possible or even a half an hour. But you want to make sure there's no moisture in these berries. And then you can use them to make your own wild GMO free pectin. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna need is a handy dandy coffee grinder. And sorry for the lighting, it's early morning here and uh, the sun's shining in, which I'm always pleased about. And all we're gonna do, now of course you're gonna want a lot more berries than this. This is just a little small batch. We're gonna pour those dried berries into the coffee grinder. There you go. And give them a whirl. Now you want to make sure that you don't hear any little pieces rattling around. You want to keep blending it until it gets nice and smooth, a nice smooth powder. Okay, so. What we have here is our very own pectin powder. And it has great antioxidants in it as well. Just look at that color. And it shouldn't really color your jam very much at all because you're not going to be using a whole lot. So uh, now I'll just show you how well it gels. You can also make a much larger batch than this. This was only from like a fistful of berries and these berries are generally very plentiful. So you can pick a lot of berries and dry them and then just store it in an airtight um, container out of sunlight. So even an amber glass um, bottle would work really well. And you can use it at the same ratio as you would use normal pectin. And this has no GMOs. It's wild and organic. There's no pesticides, there's no additives, no flowing agents. And it has lots of vitamin C and antioxidants as well as the pectin and some fiber in there from the seeds. 
You can feel free to sift it out if you don't want the little seed particles in there, but you really won't notice them in your finished jam. So let's give this a try uh, and I'll show you how well it gels. So here I have one cup of water. I'm going to put in one tablespoon of our homemade pectin powder. Give it a little stir to get rid of all the lumps. I actually really love this color. There we go. Now we're going to let that sit for about 30 minutes see how it gels. Okay, so let's take a look. It's been about 20 minutes. I'm always sort of impatient. And you can see, just sitting here in the cold, it'll thicken up even more when you boil it. But it's become a nice thick gel. Now all that pectin comes out and there's a little bit of fiber and of course there's a little bit of color so if you're doing an apple jam or something it may tint it slightly but I'd still prefer to have a whole food with lots of antioxidants and there's some fiber from the seeds and all these wild berries are really superfoods so it's much healthier than pectin that's been refined and if you're picking wild berries and you're making yourself some jam you really want to use some really great products. And as for flavor, mm, almost nothing. Um, you can taste a little earthiness very, very faintly, but mixed into your jam, you're not going to notice that. So there you go. You can make your own pectin at home uh, using wild bunch berries.